Does Sukuna feel too overpowered? So it's been a while since my last JJK video, so I wanted to talk about this before the Yuta and Sukuna fight really heats up. Now I'm not the most knowledgeable in JJK, so just take this more of a ramble slash rant, but yeah, let's get into it. So Ryom and Sukuna has been terrorizing the JJK verse and even really the fans of the series, as at this point it really feels like nobody is safe. And personally, I love Sukuna, especially his on-screen presence as he really just does whatever he feels. And you can always feel real tension these characters are going through, like this guy's a menace without any real sort of endgame. But yeah, as we know, the fight between Gojo and Sukuna began in chapter 223 and would last until chapter 236. Every week, the entire community tuned in to see the strongest sorcerers in history fight to the death, with constant displays of power against each other in a very interesting fight. And it would seem that Gojo was in control and thought he'd won, as we saw in this panel here, until Sukuna disrespectfully splits him in two using his slash attack with the knowledge he had gained from Maharaga's adaptation. Now, with Sukuna solidifying his spot as the strongest sorcerer in history and currently alive, well, what's next? He'd already taken off the person who was presumed to be the strongest, at least in this modern world. The next challenger who tried to step up to Sukuna was Kashima, whose entire purpose was finding someone he could use his ultimate ability against as he could only use it one time. And we'd last seen Kashimo in battle with Akari, which was a super entertaining and close fight in which they were both holding back to some extent as Kashimo couldn't use his cursed technique and Hikari couldn't end him as he was after Kashimo's points. And you know, me as a viewer was obviously thinking Kashimo couldn't beat Sukuna, but maybe he could put up a decent fight, but man was I wrong. I mean, he cooked a little bit I guess against a weakened Sukuna and being real, he didn't do all too much. Well regardless, none of that matters as Sukuna entered his peak form and literally sent this guy flying into a flashback. And it was at this point I really started to question how big the gap between Sukuna and the rest really is. Like, let's look at the remaining serious fighters we have on the side of the good guys. We have Yuta, Hikari, Maki, Itsudori, and pretty much everyone else is irrelevant at this point. I mean, the last person that came to help them put Sukuna on trial, and absolutely nothing changed about the power dynamic in the verse. I mean, they took what, his cursed tool? I mean, that's cool and all, but what did that actually do? I'm definitely not moved by it, and I don't even think Sukuna was either. Y'all let me know if y'all think it did anything crazy, because otherwise the trial was a super flop to me. But yeah, Yuta and Akari, the insurance for Sukuna, as said by Gojo, if you were to lose to him. Now, whoever you think is stronger between Yuta or Hikari isn't really the issue here. The main point is they're constantly compared to each other and grouped together throughout the series. So even if you think Yuta is stronger, which is fair, it wouldn't make too much sense for Akari to be that far behind and Kashima, who's undoubtedly at least comparable to them, got thrown around like he was a toy. And listen, I love these two characters, but I'm just not seeing it personally. Then there's Maki. Is she on their level? And if she is, does it really matter? Like, this is how widely insane this gap feels to me. I don't know if I'm the only one who feels this way. Maybe some of y'all would disagree. Let me know in the comments. We saw that Yuji learned RCT in the latest chapter, which is pretty cool, I guess. But he still got treated like a child by Sukuna in which he randomly just started having an internal monologue when there's a man trying to fight him. So yeah, either these guys get a lot stronger very quickly, or that's a wrap for JJK. Basically, what I'm getting at here, especially with Gojo being gone, does it seem feasible for these guys to take down Takuna? And yes, before anyone starts typing away saying this is a shonen, I'm very aware of that. But the power gap being this wide, this late in the story is not very common. Usually, we'll get a gradual step up in power until a final power up or something of the sort. But here, even with most of them receiving them, it still feels extremely minimal. Hopefully that makes enough sense to y'all. Now the only wild card I had for Sukuna's defeat was Kenjaku doing something to him, without really having to fight him, you know, just something he's been planning to eventually take him out. And well I guess that is thrown out the window thanks to Yuta Okotsu, which defeated Kenjaku in a recent chapter. I mean, who knows, Kenjaku may have pulled a fast one on us, which judging by the latest chapter is possible. But I guess now instead of that, Sukuna will be carrying out Kenjaku's backup plan as he has the authority to activate the merger. We'll see what's going on with this and everything, but right now it is not looking too good. So before I end off this video, I wanted to talk about the ending of Jujutsu Kaisen and the possibility of it potentially feeling cheap or Disney as some would say. And though I do have a slight fear of this happening and some understanding as to why some would say this, as the manga is going right now, like if we just start getting power up spam and it's written in a way where it's not really satisfying or doesn't land, that could spell for a really rough ending for this series. Now I will never just assume this will happen, especially for a series in my opinion that often doesn't miss. It's just a matter of execution at the end of the day. 
And if I go in with a negative mindset like that, there's just really no way for the ending to be good. As for the ending, things have happened that you can be concerned about, but you can say that about many series building towards their end. And writing it off completely is just ridiculous. With that being said, do y'all believe Sukuna is presented as too overpowered and maybe his defeat won't feel satisfying or whatever that may be? Y'all let me know how y'all feel about it and JJK's current state. I'm honestly enjoying the manga as much as I ever did. This is just something I think about from time to time. If you liked the video, like the video. If you didn't, don't. I should be posting more JJK in the future. Follow me on Twitter if you want. That's all for me. Peace.